Welcome to Females and Fine Fettle, from Wiped Out to Wealth. This is where conscientious women entrepreneurs and women living like a boss come to learn about balancing their personal and professional wellness with ease. If you have the enthusiasm, motivation, and grit to make it happen, then listen up every Monday. To be sure you don't miss an episode, sign up for weekly updates at femalesandfinefettle.com. The following discussion is for educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease. Please don't apply any of this information without first speaking with your doctor. Now, here are your hosts, Denise Pasquinelli and Dr. Michelle, your natural women's health advocates who blend the wisdom of ancient healing traditions and the science of functional medicine. Hey there and welcome back. Denise and I have been uh, busy planning out the next few months of the podcast and I think you're really going to love it. We've got some pretty great topics coming up and if you follow us on social media, you may have noticed that we're asking our audience for some feedback about specific frustrations and struggles in certain areas. So next month, we'll be focusing a lot on nutrition and debunking the saying that food is just fuel because it's so much more than that. So before we dive in, I want to ask you, what are your biggest frustrations and struggles when it comes to food and nutrition? You can shoot us an email at hello at femalesinfinefettle.com and let us know. So in today's episode, we're going to dive deep into a topic that you probably have a super intimate connection with, stress. Stress? What's that, (laughs) Dr. Michelle? (laughs) I know. (laughs) Now, I know you've heard it before. You need to manage your stress better. You need to practice self-care. You need to meditate. You need to do this or that. But the thing is, you probably end up stressing out about not stressing, right? Totally. And when you're burning the candle at both ends already, the act of de-stressing ends up feeling more like one more item on the to-do list. Yes, exactly. So one thing that really kicks my butt into action is to not only understand the why behind doing something, but also really making it applicable to my life. I'm sure you can relate, right? So our hope in today's episode is to help you get a better understanding of how stress impacts us and how it directly contributes to one of the main concerns of most of the women I work with their weight. Mm, I'm so glad that we're talking about this topic today because I frequently talk to women who are frustrated with that weight that just won't budge, you know, even though their diet hasn't changed or they're working out every day. And I often will talk about how stress plays a role in weight gain, especially that weight around the middle that plagues so many of us. Mm -hmm. Um, But stress also plays a role in stubborn weight loss. And I can tell that they they hear me, but it isn't all that impactful for them until we make it super personal to their everyday lives and get really curious about their core stressors. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, the topic of stress and its effects on health has become so ubiquitous that it's almost meaningless at this point. Now, stress certainly contributes to the health of our entire bodies and all of our energy centers. So it's super important. But when its reach is so broad, it can be really hard to feel empowered to do anything about it. So being able to really ground down into this topic and consider how it affects our own individual lifestyles and bodies is important for our waistline, but it's also really important for our lifelong sense of health and vitality. Yeah, totally. I chat with women all the time who have no idea the stress that they're under. I ask about, you know, daily stressors, and a lot of times they tell me that they don't really have a lot of stress or things, you know, they just go with the flow. Things don't really bother them. But, you know, when we start talking a little bit deeper about certain topics around you know, work, finances, or family, you know, the light bulb finally clicks. <laughs> Absolutely. That day-to-day personal stress load often becomes so routine that we don't even realize all of the things that we're doing and that we're holding on to. I also think that we carry a broader sort of stress, uh, like stress about things happening in our community or injustice that happens in our country or all over the world. That sort of stress is also quite common and not always immediately perceived or comes top to mind when we start talking about stress. Yes, totally, totally. These, along with those other topics I mentioned, like work, finances, and family, are some of the main stressors I hear about and what most ladies are, you know, familiar with. But what 
we need to really be paying closer attention to is something called our allostatic load. So the allostatic load is the accumulated stresses or stressors in our life, which can, you know, definitely include things like work, finances, and family stressors, but it also includes, you know, physical stresses from maybe having poor posture, sitting at a computer, or disruptions in our gut microbiome from, you know, poor food choices or inflammation from toxic stressors in our environment. It also includes perceived stressors. So things like feeling anxious about a presentation or an interaction with a difficult person. You know, these are obviously not true dangers or life-threatening situations, but our body still ends up in that fight, flight, or freeze response. So we still get that huge dump of cortisol. Yes, totally. And I'd love to add perceived fear to this list and say that chronic consumption of the news and really fear driven media or even just streams of social media can contribute to that um, sense of stress or FOMO, (laughs) fear of missing out. And that is all going to uh, add to that load that we're carrying in our body as well. So true. I've actually been spending a lot of time unfollowing (laughs) a lot of things on my social media (laughs) feed, like for that exact reason. But yeah, perceived stress, right? It's it's crazy. So we should, you know, also address the fact that good stress (laughs) can add into that pile, right? Because being in a new relationship, the birth of a baby, planning a wedding, these things are all potentially good. Right, but they still put that strain on our HPA axis or our hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis that largely regulates our hormonal system. So, you know, why is stress so hard on our system and why does it contribute to weight gain? Well, stress directly affects our weight by increasing our cravings and really throwing a wrench in our willpower. So when we're stressed, the emotional part of our brain is stimulated. So we have trouble with decision making, right? So this makes (laughs) us more vulnerable to impulse buying, right? Like grabbing a candy bar on your way to check out or a little piece of chocolate or whatever, you know? And The stress also stimulates our craving for comfort foods. So we crave sugar because our brain is screaming for energy. We crave the salt because we need to help maintain our blood pressure. And then we crave the fat to help replenish our sugar stores that we used up after the so-called crisis is over. But the thing is, the crisis is never over, right? We live in this constant state of fight, flight, or freeze. And then on top of that, you know, cortisol, our main stress hormone, actually increases the pleasurability of compulsive activities <laughs> and the taste of sugar and salt. So we grab that pint of ice cream and then eat the whole thing. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, totally. And then, you know, and, and the more fat or more accurately VAT, V, V-A-T, visceral adipose tissue that accumulates around our midsection or that belly fat actually releases inflammatory chemicals that self-soothe and calm our brain while at the same time messing up our hunger signals. So we can't easily tap into when we feel full. So it makes sense why we feel like we have no willpower when we're stressed, right? Yes. And I've totally noticed this also. I love having that physiological and that biological sort of perspective of what's happening when we're stressed and how that affects our willpower. And from a social perspective, I think about some of the characteristics of being alive right now and living in the culture that we do. And I notice a trend of impulsiveness and excess, yes. <laughs> which it sounds awful. Um, but, you know, things like overworking, overspending, over consuming, over scheduling, over stressing and feeling overwhelmed. All of these are kind of the norm, right? Yes. Like, Not necessarily for everybody and not all the time, but consistently overextending ourselves and going beyond our means or having that behavior normalized on a daily basis via our peers and in the media. This affects our sense of having enough and being enough and doing enough. So those beliefs, that kind of scarcity mindset That is all designed to weasel its way into our brain and our hearts and affect our consumption habits. This turns out to also be affecting our physiology. 
So it accumulates the stress in the body. And then we feel like we can't handle it all by ourselves. So the desire to impulse buy and impulse eat makes a ton of sense. It's everywhere we look in our lives. The overconsumption is nice and distracting. And in the moment, it doesn't help us to feel safe and secure. Unfortunately, eventually that leads to needing more and more to feel safe and secure. And then there's the stress rising in trying to keep up with it all. Oh, my God. It's all connected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, you know, life is never perfectly zen, right? It's like right. it's a matter of really tapping in and finding our personal sweet spot. And one of the best ways to find that balance is to first focus on getting good quality sleep. I know <laughs> it's like we I we've said it so many times before, but like <laughs> don't push this off. Don't wait until you have a diagnosis, right? Why is it that we need to be in a disease state before we take any action on our health, right? Our body is almost too adaptable or too resilient for its own good because we end up convincing ourselves that everything's okay, we're fine, like our body's going to take care of it, but the thing is, we can quickly go from a healthy state to being imbalanced and then having noticeable symptoms and then being grouped into a syndrome and then finally getting diagnosed with a disease, right? It's a slippery mm. slope. Totally, yes. And from a quantum, this is going to be a little bit of a tangent, but it's going to connect. <laughs> from a quantum healing perspective, holding on to weight like what we were talking about earlier, that can indicate an emotional need to feel safe and secure. And then the weight is acting like layers or padding to offer a sense of protection when we feel overwhelmed or afraid or like there's just too much to bear. It offers a way to soften the blow, if you will. And holding on to weight can also be about fear of being seen. So if if you're feeling like a desire to hide or stay small because of those feelings of not being enough, this might also be contributing to unwanted weight. So when we have these emotions, I'm afraid, I'm overwhelmed, I can't do this on my own, I'm not worthy, our bodies and minds and spirits all feel stress. And we might comfort that with some of those sugary foods that we were talking about or alcohol or salty snacks or maybe by going out and buying something new or staying up all night watching something comforting, right? Like these are all super common and can be comforting in the moment for sure. But those dang fears are still going to be lurking around. So one method of self-care might be to address some of these bad boys instead, which sounds so uncomfortable, I know. <laughs> but letting those feelings be felt and take up space and be seen really is an effective way to move through them instead of hushing them and packing them around with you every day, essentially avoiding feeling that fear. So when feelings are pushed down deep or pushed aside for another day, which, like Dr. Michelle said earlier, never actually comes, <laughs> um, that energy hold, it just it's holding on in our bodies. It holds on on our bellies, on our thighs, the hips, the arms, doing what it can to be seen. Mm -hmm. So getting curious about what is more comfortable to avoid can do wonders for our physiology and our ability to digest what comes our way. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love this angle. Let's practice prevention, shall we? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so when I think about our adrenals and the balance of stress hormone in our body, I think of it like a pendulum. So on one end, we have adrenal overdrive when we've got that pedal to the metal and we're just pushing through, right? And then on the other side, we have adrenal exhaustion or total fatigue. And we want to be somewhere in the middle most of the time, right? So if you're curious where on the pendulum you fall, I'll give you a few examples examples here, but we'll also include a questionnaire for today's freebie so you can actually get a much better idea of what your adrenal status is. So if you're dealing with adrenal overdrive, that pedal to the metal, you're probably experiencing anxiety, depression, irritability, uh, carb, fat, or salt cravings, um, abdominal weight gain, 
um, insulin resistance or high blood sugar, uh, insomnia, sleep issues, high blood cholesterol, um, high blood pressure, um, some hormonal imbalances, uh, especially things like amenorrhea or infertility issues, um, increased frequency of illness, um, and really low stress tolerance or poor overall resilience. So kind of feeling like you've got that short fuse. Yes. And these symptoms can be balanced or we can kind of pull that pendulum a little more towards the middle with food. That's one approach. So having some fresh fruit and vegetables and eating maybe more raw foods to help cool down some of that heat that is being produced in the body and kind of burning out those adrenals. We can be mindful of blood sugar balance. So having a bit of fat, fiber, and quality protein with every meal. Also things like spending time in nature, getting a view, spending time near the ocean or in a forest. Something that will help call in calm and help you to broaden perspective can be really helpful. Also to kind of... Uh, speak to some of those emotional things that might be happening inside of the body, we can turn to affirmations. They're a really great way to balance our emotional bodies and change the script in our minds. So some nice affirmations for adrenal overdrive are things like, I am calm and cool. Mm -hmm. I f- <laughs> Doesn't that just feel good to yeah. say? <laughs> I feel ease in my life. I float along with life like I'm riding the waves of the ocean. I pay attention. I listen. I am seen and I am listened to. So when you maybe things start to feel really overwhelming, just taking a beat and repeating some of these, you know, these are, you could come up with your own to help bring you back into your body. That can be super helpful. And of course, I love a good deep breath every now and again. So a deep breath and thinking about something that you just love, love, love to bits like your pet or the smell of fresh cut grass or the sound of your best friend laughing that can disrupt the feeling that you need to do more, more, more. So call in some love and recall a time that you felt super safe and give yourself the permission to feel love that can be super balancing when those adrenals are working on overdrive. Mm -hmm. I feel like my stress level just went down from you reading all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> those are such great ideas. I love that. Um, awesome. And if you're dealing with adrenal exhaustion or you're heading on the other end of the spectrum, um, you're probably experiencing more fatigue, uh, like chronic inflammation, like literal burnout, right? Um, autoimmune disease, poor concentration, uh, poor memory, poor decision making, possibly thyroid dysfunction, uh, certain addictions, and that doesn't necessarily mean drugs, but we can be addicted to a lot of different things. Um, muscle weakness, muscle loss, uh, increased bone turnover or decreased bone density, and also a decrease in sex drive. Mm, yeah, so these symptoms can be balanced by bringing in all the juicy, nourishing, joyful, playful things in life. So foods that are rich in fats and flavor, think like salmon or toasted nuts or some rich ghee or butter on brightly colored vegetables, even sinking your teeth into something fresh and juicy like an organic peach or a mango. Mm. Think about eating just in general as a way to feel vital and alive. So thinking about favoring foods that are colorful and fresh is super important. And you might also want to just bring in some thing really nourishing, like getting a massage or listening to your favorite get up and get moving tunes on your commute instead of the news. <laughs> <laughs> um, that could be really super as well. And of course, laughing, like taking any opportunity to laugh is mm -hmm. just going to help shift that energy. Nice affirmations for that adrenal exhaustion are things like, I am full and complete. I am worthy of love. I am free to enjoy my life. I move mountains by showing up as myself. 
and I weave passion and fire into my life. And of course, breathing deep again, if you're feeling exhausted, it can be super beneficial. Always breathing. Conscious breath work is like a little bit of magic that you can call you back into the present in the moment, giving you the opportunity to work through what might be causing that stress, that fear, or that suffering that is cropping up in the first place. Uh, so instead of, yeah, instead of stuffing that stuff away, just taking a deep breath and being present for it. Love it. I love the one I move mountains by showing up as myself. <laughs> I love that yeah. one. <laughs> yes. And, you know, back to breathing. Breathing is just so key. I mean, if you think about it, you know, we can go weeks without food. We can go days without water, but, you know, only a matter of seconds without breathing. Yet it's so overlooked. So this is just a really, really good reminder. So oh, I love that. Yeah. I love thinking about it that way. It's true. <laughs> so <laughs> we cannot wait to meet you back here next week in episode 42. We have a very special episode because it is <laughs> the fifth Monday of the month. So Denise has put together a grounding meditation that is going to complement your de-stressing work to the max. So be sure to tune in. Have a great rest of your week. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to Females and Fine Fettle from Wiped Out to Wealthy, a podcast to fit your lifestyle. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at femalesandfinefettle.com. If you have questions or topic ideas for upcoming episodes, we'd love to hear from you. Please be sure to tune in next week.